In this question, we have a sample that contains 2.34 moles of beryllium. And our question asks how many beryllium atoms are in the sample. So we're told the moles, we need to find the atoms. So let's go to our equation sheet and have a look for moles. So here's moles. We're told that one mole is the amount of matter that contains 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles. So let's write that down. One mole is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles. So you can see here a mole is just a way of grouping together a large number of particles to make it easier to talk about them. The same way we talk about one dozen eggs or a six pack of fizzy drinks. The mole is just a way of gathering many together to make it easier to count them. So if we have 2.34 moles of beryllium, how many particles, or in this case, how many atoms of beryllium is that? So we're going to go ahead and do our conversion the same way we would for any other unit conversion using dimensional analysis. So we have the question written. Our next step is to fill out our fraction here, which we're going to use to convert the moles. Now we have moles to start with, but we don't want to end up in moles. We want to get rid of that. So I'm going to put the unit moles on the bottom of my fraction so that those will cancel out. I do want to end up with particles or atoms. So I'm going to have atoms on the top of my fraction. My last step is to make sure the top and bottom of my fraction equal each other. Because in order for this to just change the units and not actually change the number itself, we need to multiply by a fraction that equals one. So the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction have to equal each other. So I need to put some numbers here to make that happen. So according to our conversion factor, one mole, if I add a one next to the mole, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 particles or atoms. So I'm going to add that number on the top here, 6.02 for times 10 to the power of, I'm using E on this platform, and then 23. Okay, great. So here we've got our conversion factors in our table correctly. Our last step is to multiply everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom, and do our calculation. So I'm going to multiply here, I'm going to divide here. So that's 2.34 moles multiplied by 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms divided by 1 mole. So we can cancel out the moles there. And we're left with 2.34 times 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 divided by 1 atoms. So all we need to do now is put that into our calculator. And that gets me an answer of 1.41 times 10 to the power of 24 atoms. So let's check that in our answer box. 1.41 E is for 10 times 10 to the power of 24 atoms. Awesome. So you can see the conversion process here is exactly the same as for converting between hours and seconds, for example. It's the same for any other units, but here we're converting between moles and atoms. So we're using this conversion factor here for the definition of a mole. In this question, we have a sample that contains 2.68 times 10 to the 24 molecules of diatomic nitrogen. Our goal is to find out how many moles are there in the sample. So again, we're just doing a conversion. Okay, so on the left here, we've got our number and our unit of our question. Next, we need to fill out our fraction here. So remember, we're trying to get rid of molecules and end up in moles. So for my unit on the bottom of my fraction, I'm gonna choose molecules so that that will cancel out. And I'm trying to end up with moles. So that's gonna go on the top of my fraction. Then I'm gonna add in my numbers. So we need to make sure the top and the bottom of the fraction equal each other. So if I have one mole on top, then on the bottom I need 6.02 
times 10 to the power of, which is E on this platform, 23 molecules. Wonderful. Okay, so we've got our conversion factor right. Now we just need to multiply everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom. So the molecules are going to cancel, and we're left with 2.68 times 10 to the power of 24, multiplied by 1 mole, divided by 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. So we can put that in our calculator, and that gets an answer of 4.45 moles. So let's check that in our answer box. So you can see here why moles are helpful. If we add a sample of this many molecules, a huge number of molecules, that number is a little bit difficult to read and it doesn't have that much meaning. Whereas if we convert into moles, it's much easier to understand what we're talking about. So that's why moles are useful and why we have such a big number here, because we need loads and loads of particles to make a meaningful amount, for example, the amount that might be in a flask.